one happy 2000. Within seconds of the new year, there were errors popping up everywhere. I mean, in Italy, prisoners had their sentences extended by a hundred years. Eh, maybe it wasn't that bad. Y2K was a pretty big deal. I mean, I wasn't quite alive yet, but I know some people that survived and they would back me up. There were billions of dollars spent on making sure what could happen didn't happen. At the start of the computer age, in order to minimize on expensive memory usage, year dates were abbreviated to just two digits. So 1995 was simply just 95, making the year 2000 just zero zero. But that is the problem. Zero zero could be interpreted as the year 1900, not 2000. Would that send our banking systems into chaos? Would the stock market crash? Would our nukes go off? What is kind of cool is that all the computers got these little stickers that said, What's it compliant? A New York man was charged a $91,000 fee because his movie rental was returned 100 years late. In Denmark, the first baby born in the new year was recorded as being... What? In Denmark, the first baby born in the new year was recorded as being 100 years old. In France, the date on a January 1st weather forecast appeared as January 1st of the year 19,100. One of the more serious bugs that slipped through Y2K's big compliance effort was a UK National Health Service computer. Up until May 24th of 2000, sent over 154 incorrect risk assessments for Down syndrome to pregnant mothers. Like I said, this error wasn't spotted until May 24th of the same year, as the hospital staff had simply just brushed it off as being, quote, a different mixture of women coming through rather than the computer software. End quote. Two abortions were directly carried out because of those incorrect results, and four mothers gave birth to children with Down syndrome who were otherwise told they were in a low risk group. What they discovered was that after the year on the computer switched to 2000, the software just simply quit calculating the mother's age properly. And this happened even after the National Health Service had checked off their computers for being Y2K compliant. Moving on to the other side of the argument, it brings the question, was all of this necessary? Some argue that Y2K was better off being just a fix on failure sort of a thing rather than prepare. Apparently Russia, India, and South Korea invested very little in terms of preparing for the year 2000. And as the clock struck midnight, nothing. If anything, their problems were just as negligible to those in the countries that had spent billions. Interesting side note, according to this article from MIT, the extensive preparations we made for Y2K had contributed to the success of our systems and networks directly following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Link in the description for all these sources, by the way, you can check them out. While researching this whole topic, I came across something called the preparedness paradox and Y2K is a perfect example of it. It states people who prepare for a disaster may perceive it as less severe than those who didn't prepare. Translating that into this situation, there was no need to prepare for Y2K as there was little harm. In reality, there was little harm from Y2K because we did prepare. The community Y2K readiness tool. Can I zoom in on this? Oh, that looks good. Image enhance. I don't know how to read this crap. I wonder how many people genuinely like had these, <laughs> these books and things like, all banks will fail, food supplies will be depleted, the stock market will, will crash. Oh, see, right there, nuclear missiles will launch themselves. I told you. From the upload of this video, we only have another 13 years till we will yet again encounter a time capacity problem. The difference this time is it's not because of formatting. It will be a 32-bit integer overflow. At exactly seven seconds after 3.14 a.m. on January 19th, 2038, 32-bit integers used to store Unix time will have met their maximum value. Unix time is simply just computer system time. It's been counting up in seconds since like the 70s. I don't know, Google it. This visual here shows what happens if we add one more second. In three, two, one, we've reached seven seconds. However, one more and the integer overflows. 
it flips to a negative value. The computer time now shows it's December 13th, 1901. There are so many things that could potentially run into an issue. Everything from the ABS in our cars to even some more obsolete things in our phones. However, a lot of programming languages and file systems have already adopted solutions to this, including moving up to a 64-bit. 64-bit integers are pretty common now, and their expiration, or I should say overflow dates, are well into the billions of years from now, so I think we'll be good. However, if you are still scared, just make sure you turn your computer off before 3.14 a.m. on January 19th, 2038.